Hey guys, Chris the Lazy Geek here and we're gonna talk today about this compared to this. So this is a camera lens, more specifically it is a Canon 200mm f2.8 uh, L Mark I uh, lens and this is a Sharpstar 61 EDPH2 um, telescope, refracting telescope. But they're basically both lenses with uh, refracting elements in there, uh, big big blood, blobs of glass. And after all of those big, big blobs of glass, we have like blobs of glass at the back end. And we also have a blob of glass here at the back end before we reach a camera. Here we have an astrophotography camera. Uh, we could have that same camera at the back here, or we could have a DSLR. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned how to best use those camera lenses. And among the topics I had was the star shapes and how important it is to stop down the lenses because this is a very important thing to know. This telescope here, which is made to focus at infinity, it is made to watch stars, it is made to have very beautiful, sharp, pinpoint stars across a large field of view, it is at a speed of f4.5, whereas this lens uh, wide open it is at f2.8, uh, which is obviously a lot faster uh, than this. f4.5, doesn't that sound kind of low, especially you're trying to take like pictures of super faint objects that are super far away and have very low luminosity, and how is that even going to work with 4.5? Um, the good news is that it can work. There's another piece of good news, at least for me, for this telescope. It's simply that uh, 4.5 is actually super fast for um, a refracting telescope like that. You have other refracting telescopes that will be slightly faster than that, but they will cost like several times more than this little telescope here. And the telescope itself, the total length that it has is from here, this particular spot, to here. Right, and it has some accessories here, like a focusing mechanism that I have here that can be controlled, uh, computer controlled. And I have a little thing that's called a guide scope that's made to track stars very precisely uh, that I would need with this lens as well. But it's true that if I put this lens side by side, uh, from here to there is not quite from here to there, and the weight is not the same at all. So, why? don't we all use lenses for astrophotography? Why do we go for telescopes? The focal length of this thing, by the way, is 275 millimeters. And uh, the Canon three, uh, 300 millimeters f4 lens is pretty much a bit shorter than this and it is lighter and uh, it's faster and it has more focal lengths, more reach. So why are we not all using lenses? So I already like alluded to that in the previous video, the star shapes, especially wide open, will be terrible because camera lenses, they're made to work in a vi wide variety of scenarios, especially for landscape photography, for portrait for photography, where sharpness is nice, but absolute sharpness is not necessary. Whereas when you're taking pictures of a star field, absolute sharpness is absolutely necessary because otherwise you'll get weird uh, star shapes. And so one of the things that we do to, um, to use lenses properly is when we have them wide open at f2.8, we'll get super bloated weird stars even when we're in focus. When we have it closed down, so when I close down this lens using stop down rings rather than the internal diaphragm to avoid diffraction spikes on the stars, but when I close down this lens, um, to f4 or f4.5 or f4.8, uh, the star shapes are much, much better than wide open. But how much better? And can it compete at f4? Because I don't have step down rings that can bring it exactly to f4.5. Uh, so I'll have like f4 uh, on this lens versus, versus this telescope at uh, f4.5. Uh, now obviously this one will have less reach so we'll be zooming in a little bit so this is a disadvantage for this lens, um, something to keep in mind. Also uh, just to be clear I use the same camera, same filter, it's a light pollution filter called the Optolong L Extreme that's really a narrowband type of filter but it's across multiple frequencies in the blue end of the spectrum and in the red end of the spectrum so it's great uh, to still display all of the chromatic aberration of lenses which is the type of error that those lenses often have and uh, so it was exactly the same uh, setup except that I switched the lens for the refractor. And so here on my computer screen are the results. So um, just the methodology used. I pointed both lenses to the same uh, nebula 
um, called the Veil Nebula, which is uh, basically the rem remnant of a dying star. Of a, I'm, not, I'm not even sure whether it died already or what the state of that star, I don't really care right now. But it's a beautiful little nebula that is a super popular target uh, during the summer month. Um, and I took... Uh, in the end, I, I didn't get the same amount of exposure, ta exposure time on uh, both lenses. I took uh, around 50 minutes of exp so 50 times one second exposures with this lens, and I actually was able to take like almost 300 exposures with that lens. So uh, the quality, the signal to noise ratio in the, with this lens is much higher than with that lens. I also am not comparing directly the uh, subframes that are, they were both 60 second subframes simply because the stacked frames actually show the issues of a camera lens much better than uh, the, um, the subframes themselves. And if we look at uh, the results, uh, I'm sure you can guess already. I mean, first, the one that's zoomed in more is actually the one with the higher focal length. So the one on the right is from this refracting telescope. The one on the left is from the camera lens. And the, this is again with the same camera, same parameters. The camera was cooled to zero degrees, etc., etc. And the most obvious thing with the lens compared to the telescopes besides like the scale difference is how the stars are handled. Because if I look, if I zoom in on the telescope stars, they're a bit blocky because the, the resolution of my camera is still quite low uh, compared to like bigger telescopes uh, with, with uh, smaller pixel cameras. But we don't have like we have there basically points of light. We do not have halos. There's nothing that interrupts the, uh, the stars there. And both of the pictures, by the way, they were taken in roughly the same conditions, meaning there were high level clouds uh, from time to time and then no clouds other times. It didn't make much of a difference. I had on both lenses a dew heater on as well to make sure that we had no dew forming during that test. So really trying to keep things as close as possible. And the picture on the left is from the Canon lens. Obviously, we have less reach and we have less good signal to noise ratio because we expose for much less long, six times less long, although we have a, high, a slightly higher, uh, sorry, better focal ratio at f4. So um, to obtain the same signal to noise ratio, in theory, we would need less time with my lens at f4 than with this telescope at f4.5. But let's have a look at this. Don't, let's look at the stars. The stars, all of them, Look at this star, for example. It has a little blue ring around it. Or this star, it has like a blue ring and then a red ring around it. Same for those two here, little pink ring around it. Um, what do we have here? We have a little uh, orange ring around it. And we have a little orange ring ar around this. And same for that big star here. And we have this very weird looking orange thing around here. And this is typical of camera lenses. And uh, we have depending on the camera lens and depending on the sample of the camera lens, the symptoms might be not the same, but it is very close to that. And to me, it doesn't bother me that much. Um, and I am perfectly fine with using camera lenses for astrophotography, including like really deep astrophotography to nebula like that. Uh, but you're starting to see the reason why uh, refracting telescopes like this are the preferred way of doing astrophotography for professional for amateur um, for professional amateur astrophotographers uh, simply because of the star shapes and if you go on any astrophotography related forums you'll see that everyone obsesses uh, over star shapes perhaps in my opinion a bit too much obsession over uh, over star shapes um, if I look at the whole image I rotated it to match the the, uh, the rotations on my uh, refracting telescope here, uh, if I look at the corners of the image, the stars will be slightly elongated um, simply because I don't have like the proper exact spacing. Well, they're not that elongated, but they're slightly oblong, right? They're, they're getting squarer as well. It's a bit weird, right? And this kind of stuff would be like for many people, it's unforgivable. And it's not un unforgi unforgivable for me because simply I am too lazy to care. I seriously, I don't care about star shapes. Like, seriously. Um, and yeah, so the star shapes here, they're very, they're quite sharp all across the field of view. If I look at uh, this full picture for, um, oops, the Veil Nebula. 
we have those halos on all of the stars and but if I look in the corners it's actually not that bad because when the lens is closed down like that the corners work pretty well and the star shapes and their defects they're basically all throughout the field even though here I think I can feel a bit of oblongness to those uh, stars to getting a bit uh, more out of shape but it's really not bad at all uh, but still most camera lenses will be more prone to distortions at the edges especially because when you link a camera lens to um, a camera you're using a bayonet mount and if you do not su support both the lens and the camera it's very likely that you will get tilt uh, between the camera lens and the sensor so the camera lens and the sensor will be not exactly square and that will introduce weird star shapes or even out of focus uh, stars in the corners of your image very readily but this is also the case for this kind of telescope it's just it's easier to adjust for tilt on this kind of telescope than it is on camera lenses so it all ends up with, can you live with such uh, star shapes? And, uh, oh man, let's, that's only 30 minutes, no, 50 minutes of data in Tokyo. Because if you don't know, if you didn't know, I am located in Tokyo. I think this is amazing, uh, taking you with this just yesterday. But anyway, um, if, you are, if you don't care too much about star shapes, and if you're fine with this kind of stars, then great if you're not a pi pixel peeper camera lenses are awesome they're light they're small they're compact they can easily be used within a DSLR without having to care about weird things like back focus or, or stuff that really messes up with astrophotographers when they use refracting telescopes or other types of telescopes their simplicity in and, on, and of themselves and if uh, you're using a DSLR you can control the focuser ring through the DSLR or if you're using a, a proper adapter you can also control the focuser ring even when you use an astro ca camera like this one which is what I did when I tested the uh, when I did the autofocus with uh, that lens so I really love this kind of lens I'm, I'm fine with those star shapes I'm fine with those weird star colors and you know I'm fine with being criticized for them it's I, f I feel much better psychologically speaking when I don't really care about star shapes and yeah in this hobby a lot of people will care a lot about star shapes and about star shapes in the corners of the image and uh, things called collimation and all that kind of stuff I've learned not to care so in the end it's really like a comparison between this small light and when you buy it second second hand fairly cheap lens and this uh, bigger heavier um, more expensive and more involved type of equipment to get uh, proper star shapes now to be completely fair um, bad star shapes typically are indicative of a lowered signal to noise ratio even on the nebulosity parts of the image so there there are other disadvantages than just the star shapes they're indicative of a symptom with the optics but still i'm perfectly perfectly fine with that and you know that result that i got in just 50 minutes from tokyo thanks to the, to the amazing optolong l extreme filter i really like it and that's pretty much it for this uh, this video if you think this is useful if you're interested in astrophotography or you are doing astrophotography then feel free to go down below click on that subscribe button because this channel is literally made for you sometimes I have very in-depth very intense videos about uh, my astro imaging sessions or setting up my equipment sometimes it's about camera lenses sometimes it's just going into the field and actually taking uh, astro photos if that interests you again feel free to go down and subscribe and uh, as always you know thank you so much for watching if if you are planning on buying any astrophotography equipment in the near future and you want to support me feel free to go down to the description and click on my affiliate link to OPT uh, if you are okay with buying from OPT because that I will get a small commission it is uh, helpful to me and you know with that uh, as always thank you so much for watching whenever you can don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time